Applique is the process of laying down material in a certain shape and then sewing around it to adhere it to the, the garment that you're going to be using. Let's take a look at the steps for manually digitizing an applique. So the first thing I want to do is I want to open up a design file or a, a graphic file. I have one just saved here on my desktop. I am using a vector file for this. You can use a raster file. It doesn't really matter which file you're planning on using as long as um, the artwork is clean and, and easy to see. The cleaner your artwork, the higher the resolution, the better off you're going to be and the easier things are going to be to digitize. So next I want to scale my design to make sure that it's going to fit uh, the hoop that I'm going to use and the application that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to choose my hoop, make sure I get that selected appropriately, make sure it fits. Let's see if I can do this in an 18 centimeter hoop. And this should fit just about right. So the first step in digitizing an applique uh, design is to digitize a locator stitch. And that's going to be the stitch that goes around the outside edge of the design and indicates to you where you want to lay that material down. To do that, I'm going to use a walk normal tool. Let me select that walk normal tool. I'm going to use a contrasting color so we can at least see what's going on. And I'll zoom in digitize around this form. I'm using the alt key, oops, I'm using the alt key to keep these angles nice and square. Now as I come in to close this up, I could come back down and click and make sure that everything lines up, or I could ask the software to do it for me. Since the walk normal is an open shaped tool, it won't automatically close itself up. But if I hold shift when I hit enter to close it, or pardon me, to end it, it will automatically close itself back up. And if I go into 3D, you can see that yes, those stitches are falling right along that line, and it did indeed close itself up. So I have my locator stitch all done. The next step would be to create a tack down stitch. And the purpose of that tack down stitch is to attach the material as quickly as possible without shifting that material on the garment. To do that, we have a couple of different options. One, we could use an inset walk where the walk stitch is going just around the inside edge of that design. The other option would be something like a zigzag or a tackle stitch or an e-stitch. For the majority of the projects that I do, I tend to use a, a slightly dense zigzag or a tackle stitch. So I'm going to digitize for that. I'm going to use a single line column to do that. And I'm going to choose to do that in a different color. And what that allows me to do is have two separate color blocks. That allows me to have my locator stitch sewing in one color and then my tack down in another color. When I get to the machine, what that will allow me to do is insert in between those an applique command that's going to have the machine stop and wait for me and feed the frame all the way out so that I can lay that material down without getting under the needles. When I press the green button, it'll feed the frame back in and start sewing again. So I want to make sure that my locator stitch and my tack down are two separate color blocks. Let me digitize around this. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go right over that same line that I just had.
And just like before, I'm going to hold shift and hit enter to automatically close up that shape. Now because I'm using a single line, it is asking me to input my width. Since I'm going to be changing these a lot, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to accept the default width, and then I'll go ahead and manipulate those properties after I get this done. So I have my single line set up. Let's take a look at what we're actually doing. So let me hide my artwork. Let me go out of 3D and I'll zoom in here on the edge. And let's take a look at this. So right now I've got my locator stitch that's running right down the middle. And then I've got my tack down stitch. Now I set this up using a single line. By default that's set to a satin stitch. I would probably change that to a tackle or a slightly dense zigzag. Its default width is 20 points or essentially two millimeters. That means that I have a millimeter on either side of this line that I'm, I'm trying to lay that material down and, and line that up to. And a millimeter isn't a lot of wiggle room. If I get it a little bit off, I'd like to have a little bit of room that I can make that a little bit wider and, and bring that in. So I'm going to change the width of my single line to 30. And that's going to give me just a little bit more room. The other thing that I can do is I can slide my single line to either be to the left, to the right, or custom, where I can have the majority of it to the inside and a little bit to the outside. So I'm going to go to properties on that. I'm going to go to single line. And I, again, could go to the left. I could go to the right. But instead, I'm going to choose custom and have the majority of it to one side, about an 80-20 split. So, I'm sorry, a majority of it to the inside and just a little bit of it to the outside. That is going to give me a lot of room to tack that material down and still come around the outside edge of that material. So, if we look at this design, we now have a tack down stitch that's looking pretty good to me. I do have a slightly problematic area in this area right here and this area right here. Because those stitches are navigating around that corner and all of those stitches are coming in and being a little bit tight in there, that can cause me some issues. So I definitely need to deal with how this tool is navigating around that corner. So in a separate video, we talked about how to handle corners like that, digitizing using traditional column tools. We talked about capping, we talked about mitering, and how to handle all of that. With the single line tool, I can actually use the properties to do that if I have the appropriate level of design shop. So if I go into the properties, so right click, properties, I have a subsection for corners and I can ask it to cap it or I can miter it. Now because this is tacking down and <clears throat> it is mimicking essentially a tackle twill design and traditionally tackle twill would be a giant number on the back of a jersey that has the edge that has that zigzag stitch that's slightly exposed. Traditionally that would be attached to a jersey and then done on a conventional sewing machine and that garment would be sewn until you get to a corner. You would leave the, pre the needle down, pull the presser foot up and rotate that whole garment, put the presser foot back down and start sewing again, which means corners can't really taper and they can't change stitch directions as much. So that would be essentially a miter style two. When I hit apply, you can see how I now have a squared off edge, or pardon me, squared off corner right here. That looks pretty normal to me. Now, if I really wanted to mimic that more traditional application, I might want it to kick in on every corner. To do that, I can change the angle of when that kicks in. So I'm gonna put in 120 degrees, hit apply, and now that miter style two is kicking in on just about every corner, and this looks very, very traditional to me. Now, when I did that, it did generate a travel stitch all the way around the design. So, what I can do to alleviate that, and you'll notice that that really starts to show up here in the corners, that, that travel stitch comes up, and it's just because it's a little confused where you want it to start, where you want it to end. So if I move my exit point a little bit one way or the other, I can remove that stitching. So now I have my locator stitch, and my tack down stitch. If I was doing a traditional more tackle twill type application, I would be done at this point and I could sew that on the back of a jersey and I'd be just fine. If I wanted a more finished 
applique look where that cover stitch goes around the outside edge and is traditionally covered up um, as a satin, then I might go ahead and finish that up by duplicating this tack down stitch. So I'd select it, right click, duplicate, because I don't think I need to digitize it twice. I might change that to a satin stitch. I might make that a little bit wider. That way if I'm a little off with my placement or if I'm hand cutting my applique, I have a little bit more wiggle room and can hide any imperfections. I can right click, go to properties, and now I'm going to change how it's handling the corners again because for a finished edge, this squared off corner is not really going to do what I want it to do. So I'm going to change this to a miter style one and I'll cut that back to 75 degrees so it's only taking those more extreme corners. So now if I look at it in 3D, I'm covering that up with that satin stitch. I have my locator stitch, my tack down, and my cover. If you want to put an applique command in between your tack down stitch and your cover, which some people will do, if they're hand cutting applique and they lay that down and they notice, wow, that edge, I didn't cut it really well and I need to go trim that up before it finishes up with that satin stitch, they may have their tack down stitch and their cover stitch in two different colors. And that's totally um, an okay thing to do. Just make it a different color block, and that way you can have an applique command at the machine between the locator and the tack down, and again between the tack down and a cover. It's just kind of a self-check. But at this point, we've digitized a design that's ready for applique, assuming that we go in and get our densities all set and our tie-ins and tie-offs, everything ready. Um, we're ready to send this to the machine and sew it out.